All right, this is a response to a question I was asked in a personal message. Someone asked me how all my views on child pornography are, how they should, how it should be dealt with, um, and uh, basically running along the lines of a lot of people. He, he disagrees. Assuming this is a, he disagrees with the fact that people who possess and view child porn are criminalized, but he still wants to put a stop to the practice, and so he was wondering, you know, if maybe. Uh, instead, the government could just take all of the huge amounts of kiddie porn that they are known to possess and offer that up for free. Um, and, uh, you know, he, 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 he correctly, I think, uh, deconstructs the argument that people who consume kiddie porn are, um, are causing it because they very rarely are actually paying directly or indirectly for kiddie porn. And so it can hardly be said that they're the um, the cause. At least the people who are downloading. Now, I'm I think I'm going to surprise him and say I think that his fundamental views. I think and not his, but I think the idea that child pornography is inherently wicked and evil um, is requires some qualification. Um, he, in the letter, refers to it synonymously with child abuse, and I don't know that that can literally be said. Um, now, maybe when he says child pornography, uh, that means something more specific than what I have in mind. Um, but to put it very briefly, regular pornography is not abuse. All right, if if two people consenting people. Uh, have sex. It's not abuse. It's not rape. It's not a crime. And if other people want to watch that, uh, as long as they're not invading the property rights or the privacy of, of those who are, are committing the act, that's not a crime. Distributing it's not a crime. Doing it with the intention of selling it, it's not a crime. And the th problem that then calling child porn and abuse is that there's an arbitrary distinction between what a, a child, a, an adult who can do this legitimately, and a child who can. Where is the line? You know, at what point, because from my point of view, and this is going to sound like I am, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to be predatory to children, but it's exactly the opposite. The idea is really, uh, I want to expect, I want to respect and, and enshrine their autonomy, and uh, if they decide that they want to do pornography or have sex generally for whatever reason, either because they want to or because they think that it's worth the money or for whatever other reason, then I think that that should be respected and in those cases I don't see how there can be any kind of argument against the practice as long as it's consensual. Uh, and I don't see how 18 is this magic line, or 16 is this magic line, or any number. But when when a child asserts their moral agency at whatever age, then I think we have to take that seriously. I don't think we can just assume that anyone is too young to assert that. If they don't assert it, then yeah, you can say they're too young. A little baby, it doesn't know what it's doing. It doesn't assert its moral agency, then it doesn't have any. Um, when child porn is done in that way, I don't think that it can be argued against on any grounds other than you don't like it, but you don't have the right and you, you, uh, to uh, tell some kid that they can't do it because you don't think it's right. Um, you know, young children engage in sexual acts um, for whatever reason, not all the time and not all children, I'm not saying that all children are like this, and uh, no one is in a position to categorically condemn them all. Now, if it's not a consensual act, that's different. I don't know how much of child pornography is or is not that standard, but if it's not consensual, then the problem isn't that it's pornography, the problem is that it's an assault. You know, so I don't think that there's anything that is wrong simply because it's child pornography. There are things that might be wrong because they're coercive, you know, so if someone kidnaps a child and then rapes them and films it and sells it, well, that's wrong, but it's not wrong because it's pornography. It's wrong because they kidnapped and raped a child or a person. It doesn't even matter that it's a child, per se. 
Now, you know, this this to me, I think, is just a broader issue of what are the rights of children, what are their obligations, uh, what are society's obligations to them, and so on and so forth. And I think that the answer is that if once a child, and if a child can assert themselves, even verbally, uh, then that has to be taken seriously. If they can't, and then this is a problem that doesn't only apply to children, it can apply to vegetables, to retarded people, to uh, people who are in some way incapacitated. If they can't assert what their will is, uh, then that is a very interesting question. I don't think that you can say that all children below a certain age uh, are or becomes least, less and less certain as you get older, and I think even when you're talking, I mean, the knowledge of self happens pretty early. Uh, at least by three, I think it's even quite a bit before that. I'm not a pedagogue, so I can't say for sure. Um, and now someone's gonna say, oh, so you want pornography with three-year-olds? Well, uh, no, but I'm not, it wouldn't be the pornography that's the problem, it would be the assault that's the problem. Um, so, yeah, and I definitely don't think that you can punish people who are simply the passive consumers of this. It's one thing, uh, yeah, I mean, because you could go anywhere with that. You could say, yeah, they're making porn even though they're not getting direct contributions. The fact that you're out there consuming it is motivating them to just... Uh, but we could also say, well, you know, the elect electricity, co the utility providers are, they're not providing electricity to, uh, um, to facilitate child porn creation, but yet, you know, they're using electricity. So does that mean the electrical companies are, are culpable as well? I don't think so. Um, you know, if you want to think less of a person because they consume kitty porn, that's fine. But to have, I, I don't understand what the grounds would be um, for convicting them of any kind of crime. Who are they harming? You know, if the child is doing it consensually, then they presumably don't mind that their image is being used in that way. If they were doing it not consensually, then the crime is the coercion of the child, not the passive viewing of, uh, you know, the, the person who, the connoisseur, I guess. Um, so that's my view on it. I really think this boils down to an issue of what are the rights of, of children. Uh, and I think the rights of children are the same as everyone else um, once they assert themselves. And if they are not to that stage yet for whatever reason, and that could be an age thing or it could be developmental, um, that's a much harder question. Uh, you know, what do you do with somebody who has no moral agency? And, you know, the extreme is that then a, per a being like that is not a person. This is the extreme. I'm not saying this is my view, but this is, I think this is where you, one of the places you could go, is not a person. And so they are, they, they are like a natural resource to be used in whatever, used and or disposed of in whatever uh, way moral agency, so uh, it could be killed, it can be robbed, and it can be placed on child porn. Uh, the other side, uh, that's the very simplistic idea, um, you know, it, it depends on your definition of personhood. This is the same kind of theory that uh, will justify abortion or infanticide or, uh, you know, the, um, the killing of vegetables, that sort of thing. The more complicated and the, the more complicated side is that it is a human with moral agency. It has all the rights of everybody else, uh, or it has some some measure of rights, but not as many as anybody else. And how you can say how many it has and how many it doesn't have, and where the line is without being arbitrary, is very difficult. I have not yet heard any convincing methodology for doing that. The only things to base it on is the assertions of the child, in which case you're talking about a moral agent at that point. And then, obviously, you have to respect those assertions. And the, the, the heinousness of the act is, was it consensual? Then it's not heinous at all. If it wasn't consensual, then it's an assault or a rape or whatever. Um, so, absent a theory of how to deal 
in a non-arbitrary way with homo sapiens that for whatever reason, be, whether it be age or, or incapacity, uh, lack moral agency, uh, you know, that's the best answer I can give. So, all right, that's it.